Nah, that's not what I spoke about. I spoke about a Savior who releases us from our mistakes, who releases us from our, our not reaching the mark, who just saves us from taking the wrong path and, you know, breaking the laws of God. This is a Savior who's come. And I spoke about the fact that his name is Emmanuel, God with us. You know, and we often struggle with this, this truth that God does not leave us. We, we constantly are thinking God is a fickle God. He isn't fickle. He came to save us. He came and he says, I don't leave you. And this is a truth that his feelings towards us do not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He loves us. And this is the truth that I'm, you know, sometimes, you know, we live in this world and the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. What does he, what does he want to destroy? He wants to destroy my faith in God. What does he want to kill? He wants to kill me. And what does he want to steal? He wants to steal the truth. He wants, to, he wants me to look at circumstances and that be the truth. Now, I was speaking to somebody recently and I said, there's a big difference between fact and truth. There's a huge difference between fact and truth. The truth does not change. It doesn't change. You know, uh, 200, 300 years ago, it was a fact that the world was flat. And you said it was round, they'd laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they did it. You know, it was considered. I mean, you could see, I've, I've seen an old map where people, you know, the waterfalls are. The truth is he is Emmanuel, God with us. This is the truth. And sometimes, you know, when we're going through different circumstances, we have to place ourselves in the truth. You know, it, it, you draw a circle in the sand. We used to play this game. And um, in this game, you draw a circle, you know, you draw this line. And if you cross that line, we, and so, the, the reason you would cross that line is you come and try to steal, like we used to keep these stones, and you try to, you, you try to um, steal the other team's stones. So you cross a line, and so if you get the stones, then it's yours. You cross back to the other side. But as long as you're on this side, the team could get you down. You know, this was a game, and I was playing with, uh, um, actually I was playing with my friends, and... Um, there was a friend of my brother's over there. I, I, I thought she liked me till I played this game, really, you know? So we were, we were just um, uh, playing, and, you know, I, I'm not very competitive. I'm not, I pretend to be, I don't really, um, I, you know, I pretend because if I don't show it, nobody else gets a fighting spirit. So I was like, um, you know, I was really happy, and um, I went over to the other side to pick up the stone. She did a football tackle. I was one leg over the other side. And she's an aerobics instructor. So what she did was she flew. She flew, literally flew, and, and tackled me onto my side. And I hit the ground so hard, and she fell on top of me, and she grabbed those stones from my hand and went back to the other side. And I thought, what? You know, till this point, I was chilled. And the thing is, I still don't have the spirit to fight back for a game, you know. I, I didn't. But I thought, this is how the enemy is. You think he's not serious. But he is. You think that he doesn't want to get you but he does he wants to steal the truth he wants to steal your life and he wants to destroy you 
And when we do what we do, we're kind of crazy. You know, we, we, we go after him, the Lord. And he wants us not to. So what does he do? He will attack. So what do you do? You draw a line in the sand on what the truth is and you stay in it. You stay in it and the Lord will expand, enlarge your territory. So I've been staying in the truth. You know, people think that we don't fight any battles, um, that everything is like honky-dory and um, kushikin and everything, you know. It isn't. I'm the only one who wears glasses and can't see anything with them. <laughs> so. Sorry. I know. Thank you. Yesterday I got my first compliment from Matthew. It was like the year is finished now. I can close 2016, you know, and I can go home. You know, my job, Matthew said, I walked in, and can I tell you this? Can I, we want to hear what Matthew said. Okay, so Matthew comes in, and so I was like, Matthew says, you look really smart. And I said, ah, oh, all this time you thought I was just a pretty face. <laughs> and he goes, no. What did you say? He's, what was your comment? Yeah, he said, we usually don't think beautiful people are smart. But in your case, it's both. So I wore the glasses today. <laughs> Leah, was, Leah gave a standing uh, 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 ovation to Matthew, and I was like, oh, that's it. Life done, finished. You know? <laughs> oh, so anyway, um, what else? So welcome to church. Welcome to Sunday morning. We're a family. We love each other. Amen. It's good. Um, I, I, I love the fact that the Lord gives us a home where we can be happy and laugh and be together. You know, I love the fact that church for me is home. You know, just family. I think about people, you know, and I, when I get up, I think, I get up in the morning, I, I think about all the pregnant women in the church, and I pray for the pregnant women, and, you know, it's just, I think about the people who are going through the job situations, and I think about the victory, and I think about all the things that, you know, and I, and I thank the Lord that he gives me so many people to think about. How full is our lives? You know, and this season, and as I'm going through, sometimes people don't realize that, you know, that everybody's going through some seasons. How many of us are going through a little bit of difficulty and need breakthrough? Come on. You know? We all need something. And I, what I do, and can I tell you my secret on how I get my breakthrough? I sit on the, sit on the word. I don't actually sit on it, but I, you know, I meditate on the word. <laughs> Those of you, you can email Rakesh at <laughs> Capstone Church, anything, any problem. But just to let you know, Rakesh is not an absent pastor. Um, he's in South Hall. We have another ch um, church going on in South Hall. Um, you know, really good news. We've got the main hall in that facility from June, July. That's amazing. You know, that's such a breakthrough there. And, um, you know, um, that it's just, um, you know, the Lord is, a lot of the team are there. So it's just amazing what the Lord is doing there. Um, I think next week he'll be here and I'll be there. Oh, no. I miss this church um, when I'm not here. I miss all of you. So anyway, so, so I sit on the truth and I'm going to take you to one scripture that I've been meditating on. Um, it's Luke one thirty three. The scripture says, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. I want you to read this with me. And he will reign. Come on, let's read it together. 
and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Say, of his kingdom, there will be no end. Say, of his kingdom, there will be no end. So in, in this small city of Nazareth, it's not even a city, it's, a, you know, it's like a little country village, okay? In the remote corner of the Roman Empire, an angel appears to a young girl. And to this young girl, the, the Lord says, through the angel says this, you will conceive and bear a son, and his name will be Jesus. That means God saves. It says God will save his people. And that's going to be his name because that's going to be his character, his, his, his nature. And the scripture says, verse 32, he will be great. Say, he will be great. Say, he will be great. And it says, he will be called the son of the most high. Because he is the son of God. He will be called the son of the most high. And the scripture says, he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And then it goes on and says, and his kingdom will never end. His kingdom will never end. Now that is a fantastic statement to make. Every kingdom at the time of its, of its reign thinks that kingdom will never end. This was a time of the, the Roman Empire. And that kingdom has ended. Every kingdom thinks at the time of it, at its height, it will never end. But there is one kingdom that is still going on that was established 2,000 years ago. The church has expanded. The church hasn't come back. You know, during our LSM this, um, uh, um, this year, we did this. You know, the church is constantly thinking it's defeated. Because that's a lie. Not your neighbor and say, it's a lie. Yeah. Say, it's a lie. Because the church is expanding. The church is expanding. We did a survey. It was a, it was a quick survey in RLSM. I asked how many people got saved more than 20 years ago. And I think only Rakesh and I stood up. And then we, I asked how many people got saved more than 15 years ago. And there was double us, about four people or five people. And then I asked how many people got saved Ten, more than 10 years ago, and that doubled. And how many people got saved in the last five years? And then that doubled. So by just the numbers that we are looking at, the church is expanding. The church is expanding. It's a lie of the enemy to make us think that the church is on the back foot. The church is not on the back foot. Ten years ago, there was no church here um, in um, in um, maybe over there or at 500 High Street North there was no church there two years ago there were two churches there hallelujah the church is expanding hallelujah we're not defeated the enemy is lying how do we keep believing the enemy we are victorious. The enemy's only attacking with his lies that you're getting blah, 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 blah. Because he's a liar. He's a father of all lies. The scripture says this. The scripture says he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom. There will be no end. There will be no end to his kingdom. I tell you something. Because of the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no end to me. There is a beginning. But there is no end. Because I will live with the Lord Almighty forever. There is no end. I love it. Come 
on. I love the fact that we have no end. We get to sing with him. Those of us can dance. You know, you know what? I really hate the fact that the enemy has stolen dance from the church. I hate it. Because I'm sure during David's time, there were people dancing. And I imagine how their dancing would look really inappropriate in our setting. You know, the enemy has given us stiff joints that our hands are like this. And then our neck is like this. For those of you who are offended, email rakesh at capstone-church.org. <laughs> Praise God. And she, you know, when this, 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 this fantastic message comes, Mary asks a question. She says, how is this possible? You know, when I, when I speak about faith, people come and ask me, how is this possible? You know what? I tell you something, great days are ahead of us. Great days are ahead of us. I am not defeated. I will not be broken. And whatever happens, the Lord will make it for my good. Amen. Amen. So she, you know, so when you tell people this, this is, this is what they ask, what Mary asked. How is this possible? You know, there is situations in your life that it is impossible to get a breakthrough. I love it. The greater your pit, the higher your platform. You know, this morning I was thinking actually about Shantha and Hepsibo and the breakthrough that they got with regard to their visa. You know, I, um, I, I've really been praying for you guys and been thinking about you guys and I was thinking... Last year, it was an impossible situation. It was, not your neighbor, say impossible. Say impossible. Say impossible. I, I love the fact that it's in the impossible situation God shows himself possible. And I, I love the way the Lord responds, you know, with, to Mary's question. How is this possible? And this is the answer, verse 35. It says, And the angel answered her and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. I think there should be a full stop there. With God, all things are possible. You know, we take this, this Holy Spirit will come upon us so lightly. Of course, we're so Pentecostal. We're so used to the Holy Spirit coming upon us that we, we're here, we go, rain down all around the world we're singing and we are like yeah 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 and we take this so casually but this is the same power that raised christ jesus from the dead that lives in me this is the same power that placed jesus in mary's stomach the same power lives in me and greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world i love it you know I, i'm not saying i don't fight back i don't have battles to fight i have lots but there's one truth i know i am victorious because his kingdom will reign forever and what is a kingdom what is a kingdom a kingdom is a place where a king has ownership where the king's law is followed, where the king is the Lord over that place. This is his kingdom. I obey God. I walk with God. This is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. This is his kingdom. And his kingdom, me, will reign forever. Hello? <laughs> Thy kingdom come. Where? Thy will be done. Where? Here. Here. Where? 
here. Here. Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Come on. Come on. And I'm going to reign forever. He's coming back. And I will not be shaken. You know, sometimes you have to stand in the truth. You know, many of us, when things happen, life happens, we become very blah, blessy about it. We think, okay, that's life. No, it isn't. I'm not taking anything for granted. Because there is an attack to encroach on my territory. You know, next time I played that game with her, When I was a kid, I learned karate. She knew aerobics. And I wasn't a Christian then. I didn't tackle the stones, I tackled her. When I tackled her, I took her stones and I came. And my brother, who he liked this girl a little bit, wasn't sure whether to clap for me or for her. <laughs> Because I'm, I did. I I looked because I thought you're not tackling me. You know, and it really, like I said, it really bothered me for some time. And then when we played the next time, because I thought you're not tackling me, fool once, second time no. No. Not your neighbor and say no. no. Say no. If the enemy can fool me once, he's going to try it again. You know, because she really thought I was a softie because I didn't fight back. Because she was aerobics, I was considered a dancer. No one knew my karate identity. <laughs> Except for my brother. <laughs> you know? I'm, by the way, I'm not in any way encouraging. Um, I am a Christian right now. My uh, Rakesh at Capstone <laughs> Oh my gosh. So she goes to the Lord and she, I mean, she goes to the angel and she goes, how's this possible? A, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. B, the power of the Almighty will overshadow you. C, the child will be holy. He is the son of God. And he says this. He says, remember how Elizabeth, who couldn't get pregnant, got pregnant? What is what is impossible with man is possible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Did you notice that he uses a testimony? The angel of the Lord uses a testimony to show the truth. Shows the truth. And I'm telling you, this is, this is my testimony. I don't care what's happening in your life. You will stand victorious. I don't care what's been stolen from your life. You can take it back. I don't care what lies have been said. The truth will set you free. Hallelujah. This is fact versus truth. You know, I was looking at... Um, I was, are you guys, listen, are you enjoying this? Yeah? So, um, I was looking at Luke chapter 2. Verse. See, I've been, during Christmas, it is good to read the Christmas scriptures. Yeah. yeah it is. And look at Luke chapter 2. And um, look at verse 10. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. How many of you are all peoples? Anybody not all peoples? Huh? We're all peoples. Correct? It says, do not be afraid. And this is what I'm going to deal with today. The enemy has hammered at the body of Christ in the last few years. And he has made us afraid to trust God. He has hammered. 
I can feel it in my spirit. Because people are not fighting the way they ought to be fighting. They're taking things that is fact as truth. What is acceptable in this earth is not acceptable in heaven. Are you with me? Do not be afraid. And I've been really meditating on this. I've been thinking about this. You know, fear comes when you don't know the outcome. I know the outcome. I am victorious. I know the outcome. My God will rule on this earth. He will reign forever. I know the outcome. I know, see as a pastor I need to know certain truth. That he will raise up a church that is without spot or blemish. See, I'm not afraid. This is his house. He knows how to shepherd his church. I'm not afraid what my future holds because the Lord holds it. It sounds so corny, but that's the truth. I'm not afraid. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, Abraham and Sarah, they had one child, Isaac. Naturally, it looked like no way will they have a nation rise from it. Fact versus truth. Just one in the hands of the Lord is enough. A seed is enough. I love it. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. For whatever the situation is, there is a solution. There is a testimony that can release a prophetic word over your life. You know, I've been, I've been, I have so many testimonies. I do. I have so many testimonies. And the enemy still tries to steal and attack in those areas. Dumbo. Because he makes you forget your areas of victory. Come on, church. Don't be afraid. Draw a line in the sand. And if he's brought you down in one area, you know, we were singing yesterday, higher ground, you know, and I changed the words a little bit, you know. The higher I made it going, higher. You know, have you ever done a karate chop? You know, you go, hiya! <laughs> you know, you guys need to relax a bit. <laughs> I'm going to a higher ground. We're going to climb. We are. I don't care what your situation or what December 2016 looks like. I know what my end looks like. And in the end, I will reign with him on this earth. Hallelujah. And I will not be shaken. Hallelujah. You know, it says, don't be afraid for behold, hold on to this. I bring you good tidings of great joy. Not just joy. You know, just now you should have called a, a son great. Because Jessna's last name is Joy. You know, so then you'd have Sean, Shane, Sean, and Great. And he would be Great Joy. You know, we need, you know, that would be, I mean, that's an awesome name. Someone named their child Great. Isn't it? Like, you can find it in another language. You know, it's only when you go to that language, you know, it's odd. Turn your Bibles, you know, I'm, I'm going to step into this. Turn your Bibles to Hebrews 12, 28.
it says here. I'm going to read from verse 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. This is Jesus Christ. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on the earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. The Lord speaks from heaven. Verse 26 says this, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are the, the, as of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain let me tell you something the lord said i'm going to heaven in john 14 and i'm going to build a mansion for you there are things that cannot be shaken Your eternity cannot be shaken when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It cannot be stolen from you. And for every, every sacrifice, every decision you make, there is a reward that cannot be shaken in heaven. I look at the end, and in my end, Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Do you understand what I'm saying? I love this life. Come on. How blessed it is that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on. How great is that? Look at this. And verse 28 says this. Therefore, say therefore. Say, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. 29, for our God is a consuming fire. We are, amen, we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. You know, yesterday we started singing this song, We Will Not Be Shaken. And many of us need to put a circle, a line of truth around us. We need to put a line of truth around us. The fact can stay over there. I don't want anything to do with it. The truth is this. My God will supply my need. The truth is this. He will perfect that which concerns me. The truth is this, that I am being transformed and I am being made from glory onto glory. This is the truth. I don't care if I feel a greater sinner than yesterday, but my God is faithful. That is what the truth is. And the truth is that the kingdom of God is advancing. And the Lord is going to enlarge my tents. This is the truth. The truth is that if a flood comes against me, the Lord will raise up a standard and the flood is going to bow to the name of Jesus. This is the truth that nothing by no means shall harm me. This is the truth that I will grow and I will grow in stature and in the knowledge of God because I am a child of the living God. This is the truth that I stand undefeated. This is the truth. For every battle that I may look like I'm losing, God will turn it out for my good. Hallelujah. If I get diabetes in this lifetime, diabetes will bow to the name of Jesus. Anything he's throwing at me, I will throw back. And I will get him because I don't come in the name of Preeti. I come in the name that is above every other name. I come in the name at whose name every knee will bow and will confess that he alone is Lord. I come with the power, the authority, 
of the almighty God. I have the keys of heaven and I have the keys of the earth. What I lose here on earth will be loosed. And what I lose in heaven will be loosed. What I shut down will be shut down. Power of life and death is in this tongue. And I will speak life to this nation. I will speak blessing. This is us. His kingdom will reign forever. Come on, church. Do you see these muscles? Do you see these muscles? You might not see it, but I will pray like Elijah prayed for the servant to open their eyes. <laughs> Yesterday, this is what I was praying. The army came, the Syrian army came against the people of Israel. And the servant went running, going, ay ay yo. And Elijah said, dude, what the problem? He said, did you see the size of the enemy? And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes so he can see the size of the armies of the living God. Truth versus fact. Have you seen the armies of the living God that surround his people? The word of God declares that the angels of angel of God encamps around those who fear God. I'm victorious. I am victorious. Hallelujah. I don't care. What 2016 has thrown, if it has, or 2014 has thrown. Some of you are still reeling from 14. I don't care. Because if he's thrown something at you, it's because you're of great importance. You are. If he's left you alone, please check. Please, we'll have a counseling session after this. You can book your appointments at Rakesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord loves us. He loves his people. For God so loved the world. He doesn't say, change and come to me. He says, come as you are. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. We need to go to him. You know, I'm training myself to go to him for what I consider the little things. Sometimes we don't even go to him. I'm speaking to the church. There was a survey done years ago. And it said, pastors don't even pray for five minutes. So I thought, if pastors don't pray for five minutes, how much does the congregation pray for? <laughs> Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. Can I tell you the story? Yeah? I had a friend of mine who, you know, he didn't have a dad. And because he didn't have a dad, what he did was he literally took everything he wanted to God. I've never seen anyone get such victory. Everything. So like if he wanted cucumber curry, he liked it. Don't ask me why. For lunch, he would say, Lord. And I've heard him pray it. He said, Lord, cucumber curry. And someone from somewhere would come and give him cucumber curry. And I'm standing next to him, hearing this. And still at that time, sometimes I wouldn't pray like that. Because we put it off. 
Anyone? Yeah, and you put it off. And prayer is communication. You know, I want to get in back, you know. I was, you know, honestly, sometimes when people don't turn up for the pursuit, I'm highly disappointed. You know why? Because if you're sitting here for 12 hours, somewhere along the line, you're going to make one prayer. Somewhere. And that's enough to shake heaven and release blessing. I love it. You know, I came over here and yesterday morning, can I tell you my testimony? Yeah. So I came over here yesterday morning and Rakesh and I, we had to take this major decision. Okay. And we, it's very difficult to be highly prophetic for yourself. <laughs> Anyone know what I'm talking about? You know, so, you know, because you, you can not trust the prophet. And you can test every prophecy. So, uh, you know, someone like me, I, and I, I, because um, I, I wasn't sure because I didn't want to say anything. Because, you know, because I, when I say it, it sounds like, thus saith the Lord. Okay, so I was like, okay, Lord. You know, I'm not saying anything. I just want to come in here. And I said, so Rakesh and I decided we're going to take a day. And we're just going to seek God. And I came in and I started praying for other people. Because um, there are a lot of people I knew needed breakthrough. So I was like, Lord, I'm going to pray and I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And when it came to my thing, I kind of said, stay over there. Okay. Um, and I just continue praying. And then it was when you were leading worship and you started singing. Um, I will climb this mountain. With no, that's not how it goes. How does it go? Was that, was that right? Yeah. With my hands. What, what, what? Yeah, so what was that? Uh, uh, sing, 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 somebody. Hands, yeah, arms. I will. Will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. And then you said, it's nothing I hold on to. Nothing I hold on to. And I thought, the, suddenly the Lord showed me. I was holding on, you know, it's, it's regard to with a house or property. And, the, and my mortgage is with HSBC. And the Lord showed me holding on to HSBC. <laughs> and I thought, what? <laughs> so poor Poor, poor substitute for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, Lord, I'm so sorry. You got me thus far. There's nothing I hold on to. And in the end, I will stand on this earth. And I will reign with him. So I want you to draw your line of truth. As for me and my household, I will serve Yahweh. If one in the family is saved, the entire household will be saved. He became poor that I may become rich. And rich is not just wealth. It's relationships. It's just contentment. It's health. He became a curse that I may become a blessing. He became, he became, um, he took by his stripes, I am healed. I'm healed. We need to draw the line. So I'm going to encourage the church. Turn your Bibles to Luke 1, There is one thing that will never fail, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to invite the worship team back and we're going to sing that song we will not be shaken 133 says this he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end truth somebody say truth this is truth 
this kingdom. No end. Amen. Is that good news? Great joy? Glad tidings? Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. It's a very professional talk that I've given. And I was looking at um, um, a talk that I'd previously given. And um, I came across this word, and it's called the Kairos time. That means a strategic time. Jesus entered into this earth at a strategic time. And I believe that we are also partakers of this Kairos time, the strategic time. This is a strategic time for the body of Christ to take a stand, to draw a line in the sand and say truth. Put the facts outside. It's a Kairos time for the church. And those who stand will win victories at this time. And I want you to declare truth. I want you to declare truth. Find truth, declare it. Let's all stand up. You know, when I played that game with my friend, only one person could enter in and fight their own battle. So you need to enter in for yourself. Because you have been empowered. There's a corporate anointing, definitely. But this is how you build up strength, your muscles. And I'm speaking as a pastor over this house. I'm speaking as a mother in the kingdom. And I'm saying, take a stand. I'm saying, take a stand. I'm saying, draw a line in the sand. Find the truth. And breakthrough.